Welcome, welcome to worship on this, the second Sunday in Lent. Remember midweek Lenten services? Uh, worship will be held on Wednesday at uh, 7 o'clock, preceded by a supper, Lenten supper at 5.30. Okay. Oh. But yeah. Well, maybe we will have supper that night. Maybe we won't. <laughs> and if uh, yeah. I'm always looking for a place for a meal, so. <laughs> Uh, the blood, please remember the blood drive uh, we do with Gloria Day every year, and that will be held on March 9th, Thursday, at Gloria Day from 3 to 6. Uh, please sign up if you can. Uh, there is also a sign up sheet in the Narthex for uh, Maundy Thursday when we strip the altar. And uh, there are some Easter flower order forms that uh, if you want to give flowers for Easter, uh, you can sign up for that on them. New to our prayers this week are John Galvin and Lee Edgers. Both were hospitalized briefly this past week. And they're both now, thankfully, both recuperating. And also Katie Hutchins, a member of this congregation, was to have surgery in Wisconsin this past Friday. Birthdays this week, we have one, and that is Haley. The wise, let us, uh, let us begin our worship service. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and more than magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we can fast that we are to sin, to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have loved with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight you walk your way, way to the glory, glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As the call of our name is the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 445. Bless 
sparkling, compass them with the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our guide, in the waters of baptism, you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises, that by your Spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Twelfth chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through 4a. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 121 will be spoken alternately. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will strike by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil, 
will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in. From this time forth forevermore. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of Romans, verses 1 through 5 and 13 through 17. What then are we to say? What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence, Things that do not exist. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John in the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the wind and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born from the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God the Father 
and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the years 1904 and 1905, a well-known German sociologist by the name of Max Weber published what became a controversial article, The Protestant Ethic, the Spirit of Capitalism. In his article, Weber posited that the rise of capitalism was due to the rise of Protestantism. With the Reformation came the condemnation of works, of works righteousness, that is, one working to save oneself, since the Reformation taught that salvation came as a free gift of God's grace. But with the rise of Protestantism, also came the belief that one could, in a sense, prove that one was saved by transferring his works righteousness to the secular world. If one did well in making money, then that was proof of God's favor and God's salvation. The Weber thesis is more complicated than that. I do not want to give a lecture on sociology and economics. Generally speaking, we are a works-oriented people. We teach our children that they want something, they have to work for it. We teach them hard work as a virtue. Work has its rewards, and if one doesn't work, then one is not to be rewarded. I can remember as a senior in college, I took the required religion course for seniors. It was called Christianity and the Modern World. One of the questions that the professor posed to us for discussion was that was the advent of more and more modern technology. What were we going to start to do with all of our leisure time? Think about that. Because the paradox is that over the years, the hourly work week has lengthened and not shortened. We are working more now than we were 50 years ago. In the course of time, probably, Less than 4,000 years ago, God came to Abram, told Abram that he was choosing Abram. He promised Abram that he would be God's, that he, that he would be Abram's God, and that Abram would be his child from that day onward. He told Abram that he and Sarai were to move to a new land that God would give to them. God said to Abram, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now why in the world did God choose Abram? It was later described by his descendants as a wandering Aramean. Abram had nothing to commend himself as being especially righteous before God. At least it didn't seem that way. Abram seemingly did nothing special. He was not such a righteous man. He even on two occasions passed off Sarah as his sister rather than his wife just so he could save his own skin. One of the people some really good works by Abram. That he was chosen by God. But one will not find them. Abram was seemingly as much of a scoundrel as he was a good guy. St. Paul helps us 
place of Abram, of Abraham. It was not what Abram did that commended him to God. No, it was the faith of Abraham. As St. Paul said, Abraham believed God. It was the faith of Abraham that made him righteous. It was not his works, but his faith. Pharisee approached Jesus. His name was Nicodemus. He began to engage Jesus in a conversation. He apparently was quite inquisitive about what he had seen Jesus do. He wondered about the signs that Jesus had done, signs that could not be done apart from God. Jesus cured diseases and he forgave sins. Jesus seemed to take the conversation in a somewhat different direction. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. It could also be translated, born again. This, of course, confounded Nicodemus. He and Jesus were traveling two different roads. Nicodemus took Jesus in a very literal way. He and Jesus, Jesus was asking the impossible. One could not enter into one's what mother's womb and be born again. No, said Jesus, told Nicodemus. It is not something that you do. Rather than be born again, than to be born of water and the Spirit. One must be baptized into the very person who was standing before Nicodemus. And that was not human work. That was God's work. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. There it is again. Just like it was with Abraham. It was not what one did that commended one, oneself to God that brought a person into the kingdom of God. It was rather believing, faith, God's gift of faith to a person that commended one to God. And what God required, God provided. Abraham and Nicodemus were righteous, not through anything they did or could do, but rather through a declaration of God. God declared it to be so. Again, what God required, God provided. Well, the season is Lent. Time for us to consider our relationship to God. And as we consider our relationship to God, we finally come to consider what separates us from God, which is, of course, our sin. And we ask ourselves, what then can we do about it? If I have a little trouble understanding myself as a sinner, all I need to do is spend some time reading and meditating on the Ten Commandments. And Martin Luther's explanation of the Ten Commandments in the small catechism. I find then that I do have much indeed to confess before God. I may not murder somebody, I may not kill them. But Luther reminds me that unless I help and befriend my neighbor in every necessity of life, I have then broken that command. 
I mean, I think that I gossip how most of us do and call any other ch names. But if I do not apologize for my neighbor, speak well of him or her, and interpret charitably all that my neighbor does, then I have also broken that commandment. Those who belittle their sin also necessarily at the same time then belittle the cross. Belittle the Christ who hung on the cross. And belittle the God who so loved the world that he gave his only son. So that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. So what do we do that will commend us to God? Isn't that an all too human question? A question that even while asking what we can do about our sin is in and of itself sinful. The assumption of that question is sinful. What can we do about our own sin against God? What can we do about our own sin against God? Our answer is to ask, what work can we do to justify ourselves? And in so doing, we have break the first command. Is that we reflect ourselves instead of the glory of God. See, the answer lies not in us, but in God. God our Father, whom we know through his Son, Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is it that alleviates your sin? What is it that makes you righteous before God? Well, it's not anything that you can do. You can do nothing to be righteous before God. What makes you acceptable and righteous before God is exactly what made Abraham righteous before God. Faith that comes to you as a gift from God the Father through the Holy Spirit. You are righteous simply because God declares you to be so. For the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ. It is the gift of faith that enables you to believe that Jesus Christ is indeed your Lord and Savior. It is the gift of faith it comes to you through your holy baptism and is renewed to you day after day after day in your daily baptism. It is the gift of faith whereby you believe with all certainty that for the sake of Jesus Christ, God daily forgives you all your sin and daily raises you up to be a new person who daily confesses Jesus to be the Son of God. Is being born again daily. It is being born again and again and again until that final day when you are raised to new life in Christ for eternity. It's faith alone that does all this, not your work ethic. It is not how much you pray or how how often you work for all the good things that you do for your neighbor. None of that at all. It is finally all that God does for you for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ. It is all the gift of faith given to you that you may believe in him and thus you have eternal life. But because it is that, Faith that is alien to us, and that only because of God's gift to us, we do all then that we can do to please God. Having received God's gift in your life becomes a life given over to God, the God who has blessed you, so that you may be a blessing to 
others. All you do by the power of the Holy Spirit is not so that God will bless you, but because God has already blessed you. Baptized to be a blessing. You are not justified by anything that you do so that you can boast before God because you cannot boast before God. You are justified by the gift of faith given to you by the Holy Spirit of God. It all depends on faith which rests on God's promise of grace. For God so loved the world gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In uh, 451. <laughs> Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in God, the Father and all, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten, Father, God and God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. Seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son to be glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the and sin. We look for the, the resurrection of the dead. We are like the world to come. To come. Amen. Amen. Stay by God's abundant mercy.
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. Oh God, you so love your church. Raise up leaders who care for your people. Bless the theologians, seminary, and college professors, and all who are called to ministry of teaching. That they form and inspire, that they form and inspire us for the work of the gospel. Mercy, O God. O oh God, you so love your creation. Breathe new life into our planetary home. Guide the work of researchers and scientists who love your worth, your earth, and inspire us to care for the natural world. Mercy, O oh God. O oh God, you so love the world. Leaders who resist tyranny and oppression, strengthen organizations that promote peace and harmony, direct their work to alleviate human suffering. Mercy, God. Receive our prayer. Well, God, you so love your people. Draw, all, draw near to all who live with mental illness, depression, or addiction, and accompany them in healing and recovery. Hear the cries of those who look to you in their distress, including Katie, Lee, John, and Gwen, and all those we know named silently before you. Mercy, God. Receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your children. Bless the young in our midst, and delight us with wonder and curiosity. Revive our ministry with children and youth and equip us all for faithful discipleship. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. O oh God, you so love your saints as our generation in the faith have been a blessing to us as our ancestors in the faith have been a blessing to us. So inspire us to be their example of holy living be a blessing to those who come after us. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's take a few moments and share the peace of the Lord with our brothers and sisters.
God of good gifts, receive thee and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, my almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often with this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's, pass, uh, our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace your table. Grace our table with your presence. Amen. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe your life in us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. Your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and the moon and the stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and bring us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Thank you. 
Christ.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of grace, at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make your face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. M660. Be the salt. Thank you. 
Thank you.